Hey guys, Clinton here with ATS. Today I want to talk about the channel plate on the 68 RFE valve body. You know, the 68 RFE is just plagued with problems. And one of the reasons is because the training has been around for a lot of years now. It came out in 2007. And throughout the years, you know, there's been innovations, but there's also been a lot of wear and tear on these things. And a lot of items, a lot of areas in these trainees, you know, they just start wearing out and power starts getting turned up. So today, you know, we're pushing 300 PSI line pressure in these trannies to get everything clamped, get the clutches to hold. <clears throat> when you start running higher line pressures, a lot of funky things start happening in the material. One of them, the latest, is channel plate. So with every valve body, a valve body is basically like the brain. I mean, it's really sending out the signals to the muscles to get the jobs done. In this case, the signals are oil pressure goes from the pump to the solenoids through the channel plate, which is this guy between the separator plate which is this guy and then to the valve body which is this guy and they all fit together and you have oil that has to go from the pump to the clutch packs and how it gets there determines how much clutch or how much clamping force you actually have well a factory 68 RFE makes about 160 psi line pressure and 160 psi line pressure when you start filling up these channels really is not a big deal because you have this channel plate. The reason they call it a channel plate because it's a plate, it has channels in it. The valve body controls the valve, it has the valves in it. That's why they generally call it the valve body. And then the separator plate, which fits between it, is your separator plate. What you see here is our separator plate that enables a higher line pressure function. And then you put gaskets between it and that kind of seals things up. Well, from the factory, you have a pretty wimpy channel plate, which is fine for, you know, that 160 PSI line pressure range. You have a very thin separator plate with no gaskets, which is generally also fine because it's not making a lot of line pressure. And then you have the valve body that fits to it. So in factory form, you know, they, they work pretty well. Well, when you start turning up line pressure to a relatively high degree, you know, 200, 300 PSI line pressure, when you start turning that pressure up, then you start having problems with cross linkages between the channels, going through the plate. So early days, you know, or you know, <clears throat> two years ago or whatever, we developed gaskets so we could put gaskets between them. Made a heavier separator plate so you'd have less deflection that fits between them. But even with the separator plate and the gaskets, there becomes a point that you start getting some deflection. The valve body is in pretty good form because it has so many ribs and so much going on that when you start putting pressure inside the valve body, it really doesn't have room to deflect. So it stays pretty flat. So we're in pretty good shape. Although accumulators do have some issues, which I'll talk about later. But the channel plate, you know, when you start talking 300 PSI, then the channel plate begins to get in that realm where you start getting some deflection and, and pushing pressure out. And again, if you don't have all the pressure going to the clutch pack, then you're not going to clamp that clutch like you should, and the transmission is ultimately going to slip and it's going to fail. So, you know, one of the newer design features of the 68, and this is, I mean, this is not real uncommon. You know, this is kind of becoming a little bit of an industry standard. Now, I can't really say that spending the money on this channel plate, you know, if you're stockish, power or you know just a you know 100 horsepower over stock that it's necessarily money that you have to spend because it really is i mean it's a nice part it's blingy it's great insurance you know the factory plate we've been i mean these things are very problematic they warp i mean they warp bad i mean we generally see them every single transmission that comes in we built the jigging so we surface this plate we get it flat you cannot reuse this plate if you don't surface it if you're going to build a stock tranny, you have to have the right jigging, jigging, you have to surface it. You get it flat, you build it, you torque it properly with the gaskets, you're generally good for 200 PSI line pressure. Once you start getting the higher line pressures, then at that point you do start to exhibit some flexing and some issues that, you know, it's probably not a bad idea to upgrade that. So that's where the billet plate comes from. This is a beautiful piece. This basically comes from one solid stock of aluminum. It's pre-stressed, so when you do your first stop, you machine it, get all the machining operations done. 
basically mimics the factory plate. You know, no smoke and mirrors here. Turn it over and you get this side of it. Well, that's when things get a little bit tricky because your filter fits in here. So when we set out to design a plate, you know, one of the areas is we want to make sure that the plate not only functions, that it will pressurize, you know, to basically a thousand PSI, but it will be functional so you can bolt it into any application. You can use a stock pan, which, you know, there's other plates. There's a lot of plates on the, in the market. You know, some of them are thicker, some of them are, you know, a little bit different design, but the key is, is it needs to be functional. You need to be able to put it into your vehicle and have the factory filter clear it, which is what we're getting here. Um, one of the areas that we found that we, that we need, you know, because we dyno all of our transmissions that go out the door, is our test port that you see in the tranny, when we dyno these things, not only do we dyno the valve bodies when they're all assembled, but we also take that valve body, put it into a transmission assembly, and then we run it on the dyno, and we have test ports that go in these guys. So you'll see each one of these is how we make sure, we ensure that every one of these clutch ports is basically the pressure that's going to the clutch pack. So we're actually monitoring pressure mainline, which is your pump. Then it goes through the solenoid, through the valve body, through the channel plate, pressurizes the accumulators, applies the clutch packs, and you need to ensure that the pressure that's in each one of these ports, whether it's overdrive, underdrive, low reverse, that every one of those clutch packs have exactly the same amount of line pressure that your pump's making. The only way to monitor that is actually to have pressure ports in them. So we you know, designed our, our billet channel plate to have pressure ports in it, so you can monitor that other way. So, so those of you that are rebuilding trannies that don't need the pressure ports, that, that you know, just rebuild it, put it in the vehicle, you don't really need to monitor it, but they're there if you need to. And then of course, the way it's clearance on the outside is it fits a stock pan or it fits an ATS pan or it fits a, you know, whoever's pan you want to do, anything aftermarket. So that's a pretty key feature. So this plate can be purchased from us separately. You can also get it with our gaskets and separator plate. Or you can buy the entire rebuild kit that comes with all the accumulators, billet accumulators. Um, one of the things we do on our base part number is you get this separator plate and you get all five billet accumulators with the rubber seals as part of the base package. So if you choose to buy just the separator plate, you can get it from us. But most customers purchase the separator plate that comes with all the billet accumulators, the Viton rubber seals, and the accumulator plate. So this is basically your package. So it's a pretty good bargain. So for what we have this price at, that's a that's pretty bargain price. I would recommend going this route, adding the co-pilot to it, and you're going to have a tranny that's going to serve you really well. So stay tuned to uh, further videos, and uh, you can go to the ATS website to check out any of our 68 RFE products, and appreciate you guys visiting.